Hey everybody, welcome back to the next episode. And our guest today is Nicole Marquis. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. This is so fun. Awesome. Thank you for being here. So I'm going to read a little bit of her bio here, which I find very interesting. And then we'll go into uh, what she's up to now. So, you know, she says, who says you have to give up burgers, fries and shakes to eat healthy? Question mark. <laughs> we're not a, <laughs> we're not about that life. That's why Nicole founded Hip City Veg in 2012 to bring delicious vegan food to the world by presenting it in a form that people already love. She created a fast food inspired menu with fresh often local and organic ingredients that helps you treat your body well. In 2009, she convinced her own father to try vegan diet to deal with his diabetes and high blood pressure when medication was not doing the job. He lost weight, cured his high blood pressure, and put his diabetes in remission, going off four medications in the process. His success has always been one of her strongest inspirations. Wow, that's an amazing story in itself. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. It's really what got me started. Right. So tell us then how, a little bit, how did you get started and how did you get to where you are today? Because, you know, off, off here, we were talking about, you know, you got 13 type of locations now in the food industry, and that is not the easiest thing to do. <laughs> yeah. It's a hard business. It is. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, um, in grad school, I became very interested in nutrition and I was very concerned about climate. And I read a book which changed my life and it's called The China Study by Dr. T. Colin Campbell. And by the way, I got it right behind me. You do? Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Great. So you know all about it. You know, um, it really talked about the drastic health benefits for people who eat a wholly plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. um, I tried it and I felt so much better physically and emotionally that I wanted really just to tell everyone about it. Right. Um, and, you know, coincidentally around that time, my father, who was in his early fifties, developed high blood pressure and type two diabetes. And when I tried to tell him he could improve his diabetes with a plant-based diet, he would throw up his hands and just say, I don't eat sweets. I try to follow a decent diet. I have diabetes because of my genes. My father had it. That's why I do. And I told my father, I have a secret. You have these health problems. And grandpa had these same health problems because you ate the same things. <laughs> so, you know, so I went out, I bought a blender and I made my dad a green smoothie. And it's the same green smoothie that we still sell today at Hipsy Veg called the BFG, blended fruits and greens. Nice. And he was hooked. And I learned that in that moment, that great taste is the key that really can open the door to a plant-based lifestyle for a lot of people. Right. And a few months after adopting a plant-based diet, my father, I mean, it was remarkable. He lost 25 pounds. He achieved normal blood pressure. Amazing. He put his type two diabetes into remission for some time. Amazing. He was able to safely eliminate all of his medications. Right. Amazing. My dad had, yeah. I mean, he had more energy than I had ever seen him have. I was really, it was really like I had a new dad. So that's when my entre entrepreneurial journey began. I thought, what if I could make plant-based food in a style that was familiar to just about everyone and that experience led me to my ultimate mission and passion, which is making affordable and craveable plant-based food available to millions of people everywhere. And I thought if McDonald's can do it, so can I. And I set out to create a fast food inspired um, menu, all plant-based, all from plants and some organic green smoothies, you know, the same one that hooked yeah. my dad and convinced him to try to try more. That's amazing. So when you got started, then did you like, was it like kind of like, did you get a location right away? Uh, and did you create a menu right away? And did you raise money or did you use your own money? Let's hear that story. Yeah. Well, great question. You know, after two years studying business on my own and talking to other entrepreneurs, actually it was more like four years of really just trying to learn as much as I could. 
um, while I was also writing a detailed business plan, I then felt I was really ready. Um, and in April of 2012, with only six employees, I opened the doors of the first Hip City Veg location in Philadelphia at 10 a.m. Um, and we sold out of food by 1 p.m. Hundreds wow. of people were in line for vegan food. And I was like, you know, people would say, who would have thought in Philadelphia, the right. cheese capital of the world, yeah, yeah. that people would want to eat plant-based. Um, and it and, was- and, and even in Canada, that's all we, like it, when we hear about Philly, I already told you, Eric Lindros, and Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> right? so keep going. Sure. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So like when I saw the line of people waiting for veggie burgers, you know, I was like, wow. I mean, I knew there was a pent up demand. That's why I did it. I mean, it was a risky move, but I knew that given the choice, even cheesesteak eaters who, you know, they would choose a, a vegan version if it tasted as good or better. Right. You know, and we continue to see the same demand for delicious plant-based options as we continue to expand to what we now is 11 locations. Wow. Um, but, you know, I didn't have a, a penny. I didn't have a dime to my name. I didn't have any experience in it. Um, uh, but I had a burning desire to make this happen. And I knew that that this was my way of making the world a better place. So it was just an all consuming passion of mine right. um, because what we eat has the greatest impact, mm -hmm. not only on our health, but on the entire, in the environment. And of course, for other living things. And it's simple. It's like you do that three times a day. And every time you eat, you, you have a last, you make a lasting impact on the world. Right. And so, you know, that became my, my mission in life. And I, you know, didn't, I was a starving artist. I was studying Shakespeare out in, you know, California and I right. didn't have background, but I do what I always do when I feel, you know, I need answers. And I just start, started reading books about business. Right. I bought business plan pro for $99 to try to teach me how to write a business plan. Um, I asked friends to help me put together um, uh, financial spreadsheets. I knew, okay, I'm going to need this many forks in the restaurant. I'm going to need this many burgers. Right. This is going to be my rent probably. Um, I remember when a friend stopped me, he asked, well, how much is, is the rent? And I told him, and he goes, oh my God, Nicole, do you realize how many veggie burgers you're going to have to sell in Philadelphia in order to make rent? And I was like shocked for a moment. I'm like, actually, yes, I do. I know exactly how many I'm going to have to sell right. because I spent so much time preparing, which, um, you know, I think was a big part of the success too, right. was just having a plan, a definite plan for what I wanted to do. Um, and I happened to meet a husband and wife uh, duo health enthusiasts. They were vegan. And I told them about my idea and they said, okay, show me your business plan. And I came the next day with an 84 page business plan. And they were like, whoa, okay. Uh, and they believed in it and believed in me, thankfully, um, and gave me an opportunity and a loan to start my first restaurant. Wow. That's amazing. That's a great story because it shows how, you know, I think there's so much lessons in that for people you you really planned you figured out you understood the market you figured out certain things you know obviously that when you do a business plan you you, you got to understand it and then you were yeah. ready you know you're ready I, I always say that's such an important part because sometimes you just got to keep doing the work and make it easy for people to help you I always say right <laughs> exactly I love that that's a great way of putting it mm -hmm. and you know I think that people people really do want to help and want to invest in other people. In fact, they're investing in you more than they're investing wow. in the idea or the business. And so when you come prepared and you come enthusiastic and you're showing that you've thought it out, they go, okay, yeah, let me give this person a try. I want to make an investment. Yeah. And so I love how you put it, make it easy for people to help you. Right. Totally. hundred percent. Awesome. I love the story. So let's say, uh, you know, so you were lined up. That that's amazing. And then you had one location 
when did you decide to, what was the biggest challenge first? Let's just back up. What was the biggest challenge when you first started the first location for you? Ooh, good question. You know, really for me, this is a great problem to have, right? But the biggest challenge was dealing with the incredible success that we had the moment we opened the door right. because I had six employees and within two weeks I had to quickly hire another 20. And that's an HR like, you know, nightmare. You're hiring 20 people in a week. You don't have manuals. You don't have an operational, like, uh, especially handbook. when you're brand new in business, right. you're like, what the heck? Yeah. Right. And also you get this one moment to, to really show the, your guests, what you, you know, what you're about. And if yeah. you mess up their order or it takes too long or, right. mm -hmm. you know, so, but my motto was just like, and it's a core value of ours is positivity, really showing up very solution oriented every day, showing up with a huge smile and truly being so grateful for every single guest that walked in the door and showing them that paid off. You know, like I couldn't believe that, that everyone was choosing to have a veggie burger at Hip City Veg instead of going to Shake Shack a block away, right. you know? And so that gratitude was just pouring out of me and, and the employees, you know, I tried to inspire them with that. I think employees at the time and still do with us at Hip City of Edge feel a sense of, of purpose because they know that this is the best way to make an impact on climate change. Um, and a lot of our employees are very passionate about sustainability. So they come with that every day when they work. And that shows, that translates to the guests. But the biggest challenge was catching up, you know, right. um, learning. It was like I was flying the airplane and building the airplane at the same time. Yeah. And that's hard to do. Um, but that's a great challenge to have for any entrepreneur. Yeah, I, I love it. And I think you're right. I mean, we have so many different challenges at different stages of the business. So you're like, yeah. oh, you know, I got to wear this hat, this hat, this hat. And then they're like, okay, now I have to figure this out. And it's just a different challenge. And I love what you said about purpose, by the way. I think it's something like, to me, that is, I believe this. I believe that is the number one most important thing to drive through a business's DNA and if you can drive purpose into that DNA consistently, which is not an easy thing to do, <laughs> consistently and consistently and consistently, that business will flourish. I truly believe that. I love that you just said that. It's such a good reminder for me. I need that reminder as the founder and CEO every day and to talk to people like you and other entrepreneurs, just, you know, yeah, I've got to talk about my mission every day. That's my job, right? That's what I need to do is remind everyone why we're doing this. Restaurants are hard. It's hard work, you know, and, and our incredible staff, I mean, the operations team, they're in there on over 450 degree grills, right? You know, after serving hundreds of guests all day long who are hungry and in a rush, they then have to like break everything down, heavy machinery, yeah. knives, grease, fire, you know, mopping everything. So it's, it's a, it's really hard work. Um, but it's also exciting and very gratifying, especially because we get to deal with people every day. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of um, satisfaction in that. And I remind my staff how much power they really have, you know, our front of house, when you greet someone, when they first walk in, you know, that person might be having a bad day and you give them a warm welcome, you just change the trajectory of that person's day. Totally. Or if you ignore them when they come in and you don't say hello, mm -hmm. you can also change their day for not, not the, in not a good way. And so I, I always remind my staff of the power they have there, but um, yeah, mission is knowing your why um, is important for the whole team and it's and so important for the entrepreneur who has to deal yeah. with challenges every day. Yeah, yeah. And I love what you just said there too about, you know, them, you know, having to deal with that, that first line. And I always say sometimes in business, like that's, 
the first line people are like literally the most important people of the business. They're more important than the, than the CEO at times, you know, as it's yeah. running because they're the first point of contact a lot of times, especially with you guys physical, you know, you might, yeah. they might somebody might call on the phone. So that's first point of contact. So they better be good there. And then the <laughs> physical is, you know, that's, what's going to win the, that's, what's going to win the referral game right there at the start yes. of that. And then the food's great. Bang. It's a great business, you know? So there's so much, I love what you're talking about. They, you know, I'm very, um, I think one of my best skills when I owned all the franchises and gyms was because I brought curves for women franchises to Canada. That was my oh. first business. Oh, cool. Yeah. And, and so I was always been a super good operator of the businesses. I think that was my best skill, driving purpose, DNA, leading people, developing leaders, you know, all that type of stuff. I've just, I've, I've just, I just, I've always loved that. Like just loved it. Right. And, I've, I look back and I was always big on like now we call it almost like a people before profit business model that we build and and knowing that more profits will show up on the back end. Right. Yeah. And, and so um, I love, you know, just how you're talking about all that stuff, because it so resonates with everything that we do and what I believe in. And I just love that. So now let's talk about you going from one person or one store. And then when did you decide to do like, OK, we're going to go two stores like let's build another one and was it one or, in the, or was it three how did that all come about yeah well you know the vision was always really big even right. before i opened the first store i knew that i didn't want to own a restaurant but i wanted to build a national and international company and brand right. and that i really wanted to change the world with my brand and with what we serve so um i went into it already thinking like every detail, really, the way the, the logo looked, the way the brand showed up online, um, you know, you know, manuals I was creating, whatever it was, the menu I created, I was thinking 10 years down the line when I'm in three different states and operating several restaurants. Right. And now I'm thinking 10 years from now when I'm all over the country and, and hopefully internationally. So, you know, I think... Um, that's because it, growth is inherent in our mission, right? So I think in order to affect great change this way, we need to make this food available to as many people as possible all around the world. Right. So um, yeah, so I when we opened the first one, um, I was able then to, with operating income, open the second one about a year and a half later. Um, By the way, that's amazing, especially in that restaurant, that, in a restaurant business, that's not easy to do. Thank you. Yeah, it was, you know, it definitely was a big challenge, but I was putting the team together. Um, we had the operating income to do it. And then at that point, I realized, oh, now we have to bring in investors. And so I did a smaller friends and family round um, to expand Hip City Veg plus um, two other full service restaurants that we currently have. Right. One is a Latin inspired restaurant called Bar Bonbon, which is inspired by my Puerto Rican roots. And the other is a cocktail lounge called Charlie Was a Sinner, which is very moody and vibey and mysterious. Um, and we serve really great cocktails and small vegetable plates there. Right. So with that um, small you know, capital raise, I was able to open the restaurants we have now. And so now, thank goodness we're, we got out of hopefully what was the worst of the pandemic. Um, we are able to think about growth again and right. bringing in a strategic partner to take us to even another, the next level. Right. That's cool. That's awesome. So are you guys looking at staying corporate or franchising or how are you guys looking at going that route? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, you know, the plan and the vision really is to stay corporate, although fran the franchise model is great. I, I love how, um, you know, the Chick-fil-A brand does it. I think they get tens of thousands of applications every year um, because each store has such a high um, average, you know, volume at each one of their locations. So they can really pick and choose great operators. And I think we'll get there. And I'd love to do that. I also think it's important to, for the team to know that they can one day be an owner. Um, so, and to find um, uh, franchise 
franchisees from within the company. I love that. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah, I, I love that that model like that. That's amazing. So you said you had, so you had a cocktail lounge too, right? A cocktail lounge? Yeah. Right. So how does that how does that do? Oh well, that's phenomenal. I mean, we really? we're yeah, we're loving Charlie was the sinner and what it's been doing over the last seven years. Um, right. It's interesting, you know. I had an opportunity to partner with um, a business owner that I really, really respect and wanted to learn from. And it wasn't on, it wasn't part of my plan to, to kind of go off course and open a cocktail lounge. Right. But when presented the opportunity to partner um, with this investor and really to present vegetables and and plant-based food in a new way um i took the opportunity and right. i'm glad i did because you know what i always want to do in our restaurants is create an experience right. that is memorable and that people want to continue to come back to that just happens to be plant-based yes. you know um because i want to create a new normal right right and plant-based foods is just as familiar and satisfying as meat alternatives. So and that's what we do at Charlie was a sinner. We it's first and foremost, a really sexy cocktail lounge. Uh, cool. And then it has really great vegetable dishes that people also enjoy and end up coming back for. Right. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So with your guys is, um, you know, with your business and, and where it's going right now, what do you feel the with the whole what do you feel the future of kind of you know vegan restaurants right would you guys say would you say you're more like restaurant or more fast food restaurant or in between yeah i think we're in between we're we're definitely um presenting chef driven Bur you know, sandwiches, burgers. We also have milkshakes and we sell French fries and chicken nuggets that are plant-based. Um, but, but we do it in an elevated way with a really elevated experience. But yeah, I mean, I, we, I want to create the new fast food, right? right? Um, and I have so many great memories of going to McDonald's after karate class with my, my dad and getting a happy meal. Like that was so fun. You know, oh, when I was a did. kid, yeah, right. You play in the, you have to play in the playground. You remember the playgrounds they had in there? Yeah, yeah. like I, I love those moments. And so, um, you know, I but we don't have that anymore. You know, yeah. we're not taking our kids to McDonald's and feeling good about it. Yeah. But, um, but a, being able to tap into that nostalgia and bring that. Um, experience to to us now that we have kids and you know taking them yeah. to hip city veg and being able to enjoy you know our our favorites um is something i love doing right yeah so that uh you know you see different models coming out right now like uh i mean i think there's a company in toronto or in, even in canada they're a fairly big fast food vegan place i think they got 50 locations now well, what is it called <sighs> It's right there. I, I, you know, I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll say, I'll email it over to you when it comes, or it might come right now because it's sitting there and I know the name. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and try and think because then everyone's going to get yeah, bored. Yeah, we'll, we'll you know, try and think of this yeah. name, right? But yeah. we'll put it, we'll flash it across the screen. Right. I want to keep hip city veg in people's minds right now. That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Totally hip city veg. So. <laughs> so. So, uh, you know, with you and, and where's, where's it going and, and, and uh, like with your business, where do you think um, for you, I just, I'm kind of breaking it down now for you as a CEO, what do you think for you now you're trying to master? This is kind of a different question. And what I'm doing here is seeing like, what are you trying to get better at? Because obviously you've had to evolve. Right. You, you know, when you start one store and then you have three and then you have four and then like I remember when I had two employees and then I had eight employees and then 10, my skill set had to evolve to different areas. Right. I'm like, OK, I got to figure this out. I don't know what I'm doing here. So for you, where do you feel like you are working to get better at? Oh, such a great question. You know, this 
what I do now is a completely different skill set than what I did in year one, right. which was, you know, so I had to move from founder to CEO. And they're two very different things. Um, I mean, I still use that that creativity, um, the um, you know, the desire to innovate that 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 you have in the founder. I, I still use that today, but right. now I have to be much more strategic. I have to understand trends. I have to understand forecasts. I need I need to be able to project out one to five years. Um, I also, you know, um, you know, I have to inspire a much larger team. Um, and I also right now, what I want to get much better at is focusing on big picture. Um, because for so long I was like very, very involved in every single detail. I mean, every detail, like what type of mop head we use to, right. <laughs> you know, the packaging to every sentence on an email blast. Right. Like, I was involved in that. And so what I've done over the past several years is create departments and an incredible team that I trust that knows the style, the design, the vision, and can, and can go ahead and make things happen. And so I'm really letting go and trusting but when I do that, I am also trying to push myself right. to move the company forward, you know, um, and to focus on big picture um, strategy. So, right. you know, yeah. I, and I want to get continue to get better at that because yeah. it's, you know, going from one to two restaurants is, is one challenge. Then you go to two to five. That's a whole nother challenge. Now we're five to 13, you know, so each step of the way, you have to learn new things as you're actually doing it. Um, and, you know, and I'll do this for as long as it makes sense for the company, um, because ultimately all I want is for the company to be successful and for the people in our company to feel fulfilled. So, you know, but if there's someone better that, that can, that can do that better than I can, I'm, you know, <laughs> open to that too, but I'm going to keep going. Um, and I think I can, I can take us there over the next five years, you know, yeah. to expand. hundred yeah. percent. I, I think you're, that's all right decision too, because people feel, you know, it's almost like that culture with inside that, you know, you started it, you're still there, you know, yeah. it's that, that it's that feel sometimes when you bring, you know, somebody completely indifferently, sometimes the culture can get broken a little bit, you know, so yeah, I agree with exactly what you're doing. And I love the fact too, of I think it's a good teachings of what you just said, by the way, to be able to step back and and really look at and do more of the CEO, CEO roles and yeah. what you said of being able to let go, which let's face it, most entrepreneurs are perfectionists. So it's very hard to let go of certain things. And then they, I go, well, I always say this to certain people. I'm like, you're not scaling because you're not letting go. Yeah. Like, you're not scaling. You want to scale bigger, but you're not letting go of anything. Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. It's impossible, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. what what has how about with the process with the restaurant industry right now? Have you had trouble getting like employees? Are they like, you know, what, what you know, the whole thing on that? How is that? How is that? How is that? Are you dealing with all that? Yeah, well, the last two years has been the most challenging years yeah. of my professional life. By the way, congratulations for staying and making it out of that because hospitality by far got hit. You can't oh. even compare. Like, it's just like your business was like shut down overnight. Oh yeah, overnight. And it was one of the worst, you know, nights of, of my professional career, right. having to go into every restaurant to personally, you know, tell my employees that, we had to shut down and I didn't know when we would reopen. Wow. Um, and, and seeing, you know, that day, how many people truly depend for their families on this job. That's when I knew I had to get into action. And I actually started a, an ad hoc coalition called Save Philly Restaurants. Okay. And it's a, 
you know, coalition made up of over 300 restaurants and bars, and we came together to advocate for our employees' needs, unemployment, emergency unemployment benefits. We advocated at the federal level for the PPP loan, right. um, the city level for ways to make it easier for us to operate safely. So I'm really proud of the work we did there, um, right. you know, and, but yeah, you know, where we are now to answer your question, um, we're in recovery mode. Right. You know, we got out of crisis survival mode, which was the last two years for most restaurants businesses. Right. And now we're, and we did grow within that time, which, which is amazing and a testament to the team's perseverance right. and strength. Um, but now that we've opened just recently our, our last restaurant of, you know, the year um, in Navy Yard in DC, um, we were taking a moment to recover, to look at you know, how can we make things easier for the teams? How can we retain employees who are so unsure about the restaurant industry right now right. because it's so volatile? Um, you know, a lot of employees had trouble trusting restaurants because we had two rounds of layoffs in 2020. Wow. You know, so they're not, stability wasn't totally there. True, yeah. And, um, and, and to focus also on profitability, uh, we're having, there's so many inflationary pressures on the company and on the industry, uh, supplies are 30 to 40% higher than they were in 2019. Um, food cost is, is creeping up labor. Um, but you know, in a time of such you know, cost pressure on the company. I actually made the decision um, to invest even more in our employees and uh, created what we call 15 for our families, yeah. which is our commitment to paying the minimum wage of $15 an hour. So it's a starting wage there. Yeah. Many of our employees make more than that. And that's really to show our employees that we value them and that we're committed to their growth within the company. And that's when the federal here, the federal minimum wage is 725. And Philadelphia's minimum wage is 725. 725? So it's more than, yeah. So it's almost, you know, well, it's more than double the minimum wage. And, um, you know, I just thought people would say on the heels of the worst economic crisis, how can you do that? And I said, because really we're in a people business first. So we have to invest in our greatest asset. And it was a risk um, and still is, but in the long run, it, it feels so right to align our actions with our values and our principles. And I think we'll pay off in the end, especially with retention and recruiting. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I completely agree with you on that. I think you're on both sides of the spectrum on that call. That is 1 billion percent right. Not 100 percent right. 1 billion percent right. <laughs> it's probably not even a term. But, <laughs> I love that. So, so, you know, because on, on the one spectrum, the retention is there because you invested and, 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 you know, and you didn't have to do that and you took a chance. And then I think also being able to show how you made that move to future employees and future people coming in can respect how you stay true to your core values in hard times. I always say this, it's, it's not your core values and your mission, and your purpose that, that matters in good times. It matters when you're going through the bad times, how you stay with them. Yes, so true. And isn't that true in so much of life that yeah. we do? It's how we show up in adversity. Totally. I think that, that really tells people about our character and, and what we're about. Um, yeah, I love that. And I think that probably has a lot to do with your sports background too. You know, like when the team is having a tough time, like how do you just like push it to the next yeah. level? Yeah. It's true. It's true. And I think too, with what you said there, you know, a lot of business owners have trouble understanding really how much time and money is spent on turnover and onboarding. Like they don't even talk about that to me. When I go in and I look at a business and we're talking and I'm even trying to help them on certain things, I'm like, but you're, the money you're losing on onboarding and retention it's crazy and the time like it's just nuts i mean if you put a little more into this 
you'd be cutting down on the money you're spending on trying to always find new people all the time, just take care of them a little better. Absolutely. And turnover erodes customer loyalty as well, because yeah. I think um, when you have a, see, there's time is really important. Longevity is, is underrated with, with, with your employees, like having someone on the team for a long period of time, they're just acquiring knowledge throughout just the time that they're there that yeah. they can then like communicate to the customer and really give just a better experience. So when you're constantly turning over, which happens, look, it's part of the restaurant industry. Yeah. One thing that the industry does offer um, employees is flexibility and just like a part-time job to come in between, you know, school break or something. And that's a great thing, right? Yeah. You know, not many jobs can offer that type of flexibility for, for people, well, but, um, you know, when you have staff that has been there for a while, you can see how, like, how, how that enhances the overall company culture. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It, re it really does. They understand the business and what they're yeah. working towards. And, you know, when you said about the employee and customers, I always say, you know, the more happy your employees are the more happy your customers are going to be because that translates to that customer. You know, that's one thing I always ask our people every day. I'm like, how happy are you? Yeah. I always ask, oh, consistently ask my people, how happy are you? I love that. If they're not ha if they're not happy and something's going wrong, we try and figure out fast with yeah. them. And it could be, it could be nothing to do with the job. It could be, this is happening at home. This is happening here. This is doing yeah. here. So we need to help to help them work through this because it's weird how people separate business and personal. It, it doesn't make sense to me because it's yeah. it, 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 human beings are human beings, whether they're <laughs> at home or you're, they're, you're working together, period. Yeah, <laughs> so true. Totally. Uh, awesome. Well, this is, I mean, I could talk to you forever because we have just a lot in <laughs> common, and, you know, and there's so many things that you're doing that, you know, I've even been involved in having stores and stuff like that. So I find this such a great conversation. Um, and I love how you just, you know, you're, you're a true success story, you know, didn't have money, got it started. You know, you're an inspiration to show people, you know, you can keep going and you can make it happen and it's going to be tough. And you went through the hardest thing and made it out of, right. You know, the, wow. the pandemic. So congratulations on everything, by the way. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome. So, uh, where can they all find you at? Uh, website, social media, anything like that? Yeah, so hipcityveg.com, H-I-P-C-I-T-Y-V-E-G.com. Uh, also on Instagram, TikTok, <laughs> Hip City Veg is on there. And then personally, Nicole Marquis on Instagram. You can follow me. And I just post a lot about what we're doing behind the scenes in the restaurant, um, things that inspire me. And of course, my uh, four-year-old son. <laughs> That's, that's, a, that's amazing. One last question before we jump. What's your number one uh, most popular food item in your restaurant? Yeah, that has to be the crispy Hip City Ranch sandwich. So since day one, we call it our golden child. It's um, plant-based protein, organic grains, and organic organic soy, and that's battered in house um, and fried on a vegan potato bun with lettuce, tomato, onions, and pickles and a peppercorn ranch uh, sauce. And people have been buying that since we opened. That's our number one seller. That and sweet potato fries. And what I love is that people come in for a fried chicken sandwich and then also get our organic green smoothie at the same time. Man, well, that, that sounds awesome. I'm actually yeah. going to, I'm going to start a I'm going to start a show. I've done a lot of vlogging and stuff for other things. I traveled around and did vlogs where we'd show compassion to acts all over North America. Wow. That, yeah, that went really big. And I'm going to do now a show where I'm going to go to like lots of different places as I travel again and try all vegan burgers. And then I'm going to start rating them. I love that. Yeah, oh, you yeah. have to come. I will for sure. hundred <laughs> percent. I will hundred percent. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much for doing this interview with us. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. It was great to talk to you. Talk soon.